And one thing I really like to do is just to start by showing an animation because I think this really answers a lot of questions that you know the patients may have. We start with the heart. Here's the heart. The job is to squeeze blood around your body. And these are the coronary arteries. They come down outside the heart and they provide blood to the heart itself. And then as we play this video here, so as the heart is squeezing, there's a valve here. This valve is called the aortic valve. And over time, what can happen is that the valve develops calcium. And it's really a matter of wear and tear. It's not how much calcium you eat over the course of your lifetime. But if you think about it, the heart is amazing. It beats all day long, all night long, never takes a break. So two, three million times per month, your heart is beating. It's not like a car where you take it in for uh, an oil change every once in a while. This has been going since the day you were born. And over time, these calcium will deposit and the valve doesn't open very well. So when the heart squeezes, it has to work extra hard to get the blood out and circulate it to the rest of your body. And that's why patients get symptoms sort of a fatigue and you know, shortness of breath. It's sometimes the symptoms can be really subtle because it's a gradual narrowing of this valve and it's just making your heart do more work. We have a minimally invasive procedure now uh, that's been pretty revolutionary in treating aortic stenosis. And the procedure is called transcatheter aortic valve replacement. And in the procedure, basically what we do is we use the artery called the femoral artery. This artery is out and goes right over your hip. Some people use the word groin, I don't really like that. If you think about it, it's directly over the hip and we access in there and we can put a small tube in and that gives us access to the, to the artery, which we can then use as a freeway to get all the way back up to the heart. So this shows once we get our access, we get our tube in, we can run a wire from outside the body inside your heart. Okay, so this is the genius thing that they developed, which is pretty amazing. So what they did is they took a valve and they mount it on top of a balloon. So it's small enough that we can get it inside the body. And then when we get it where we want, we just blow up the balloon to make it the right size. And as we see here, here comes the valve. It comes up and over, and it goes directly inside your valve, your current valve. At this point, it's pretty simple. We just blow up the balloon, the balloon comes down, and you have a brand new functioning valve. And then it's just a matter of us taking out the delivery system and the wire. And I like this part of the video here because this shows yeah. your new valve is inside the old heart valve, okay? okay? And the old heart valve acts as an anchor, so it's not gonna fly away, and that calcium will hold it in there. And you can see now, look at how much more this valve is opening. So it really relieves the stress that, that's being put on your heart by the aortic stenosis and the tight, the tight valve that you have. This is what the valve looks like. It's a stented valve. Uh, made as the same material as our coronary stents, which means it has a type of metal okay. that we can crimp down, we can make it small, and then we can expand it with a balloon. Okay. And it's pretty strong, so you'll see it will keep its force mm. um, inside the old valve without collapsing down. It has a little skirt around it, so nothing mm. leaks around it. And uh, this is, you know, the current state-of-the-art valve. There's other types of valves. Uh, I tend to use this in the majority of the case, but it depends on a patient-by-patient -patient basis. That's what I was going to ask. Is that the same size for every patient? No. no. We have 20, 23, 26, and 29 millimeter valves in this particular brand. So the performance of these has been excellent. The leaflets themselves are made from the pericardium, the outside of a heart, from a cow. So it's bovine pericardium. And they take these out, they suture them together, and they suture it onto the valve. It takes about 24 hours of manual labor to get these valves made, is what I've been told. So it brings us to the next point. Um, you know, what is the workup for this? So there's a couple key pieces. So first of all, one of the things that's been really important is to get a, a high quality CAT scan. So when I do the CAT scan, I go in, I can make my own measurements and know exactly down to the pixel what size valve you have. This CAT scan is really important to make sure that, you know, there's no other concerns with calcium or where we put the valve in. And we can also make sure that the arteries that I'm gonna be using getting up to the heart are of adequate size. And these valve delivery systems have gotten smaller, so the vast majority of patients we can now treat just by going through the femoral artery, uh, which tends to be the quickest recovery, and that's what our goal is in every case. So the surgery usually takes us about, in a straightforward case, 30, 45 minutes. Um, there's a lot of prep time though that goes into that. We'll review every case ahead of time, you know, talk about all the 
differences and nuances. There's a lot of time getting the patient on and off the table, but once we start going, it's usually about 45 minutes to get the, the whole thing done. And you said not everybody's a candidate for this, right? So can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so that's a great question. You know, the, there's the tried and true, what's been around for a long time is open heart surgery, okay? And certain patients may have um, other reasons why they might need open heart surgery. For instance, if the coronary arteries that we talked about are blocked, then they may need to have those addressed. Certain valves are just not good for a TAVR. So it's a pretty complicated group of, of conditions that we look at when we decide whether a patient should be better off for TAVR or a surgical, a surgical valve replacement. And for the most part, if there's a lot of work to be done, if there's coronary work, sometimes the aortic root needs to be done, then open heart surgery may be better. And we really individualize it for every patient. You'll also talk to an, an open heart surgeon. Mm -hmm. And then they get a chance to meet you and talk about what open heart surgery entails. And then we'll take all the information together and we present it at what's called our multidisciplinary valve conference, uh, which is a conference where we have multiple surgeons on. We have cardiac imagers, we have interventional cardiologists uh, like myself, and we go over every case and we come up with recommendations that's best for that particular patient. What's the percentage of success? Percentage of success is pretty much 100%. I mean, it's you know, once we get going on the on this procedure, uh, if we put the valve in, um, you know, it would be rare that they don't, you know, that it doesn't work. Haven't really seen that before. And there's always a, some complications when we're working on the heart. So, you know, those include a stroke, damage to the arteries. If there's calcium there, it could actually damage the heart itself. But fortunately, those risks are pretty low. And, um, you know, it's it's dependent on the patient, anywhere from 3%, 5% for everything combined. If there's a 5% chance of risk, that means 95% chance everything goes smooth. So. How about recovery? What does that look like? Yeah, good question. So the recovery from TAVR is, is um, it's usually pretty straightforward. I mean, we make a small incision to get the artery, to into the artery. Yeah. So we'll tell patients afterwards, you know, just take it easy, no heavy lifting, no squatting, you know, take it easy there. Tell them don't take you know a full bath until it um, until it heals up, but you can take a shower. You can go home the next day, take a shower, and then just put a bandaid over the top of it. I don't really put restrictions on patients. Other than that, you know they can go out. They should be able to walk in one day, walk out home the next day. Patients are we don't give them pain meds. They don't really need it. They go home the next day. They should be able to walk around and do their kind of daily life. And then over the course of a couple of weeks, you know, we really see most patients will feel quite a bit better, more energy, and we'll send them on to cardiac rehab, you know, and which has been really helpful for patients to get back the strength, you know, because over time you can lose that when you have this condition. So the cardiac rehab is really key in getting the patients to get back up to the level that, you know, they would have been if they didn't have this valvular condition. How much experience have you had with this valve? So I've had quite a bit of experience. Uh, I did my training at Scripps about nine, 10 years ago, and uh, we were in the original trials. And I've seen a big change since those trials in terms of the technology and the whole community understanding how to do this quickly and efficiently. Done hundreds and hundreds of these um, over the years. And you know we've really moved towards a more minimalist uh, approach. So when we do these cases, you're breathing during the case. Your heart is beating on its own. And we have a cardiac anesthesiologist there who are excellent and they keep a close eye on things. But we don't have to put a breathing tube down. Uh, you do all that on your own and, and really makes for a quicker recovery so that when we're done, you know, we put a stitch in where we went in for the valve. And then, you know, most patients will, will wake up really quickly and be on the road to recovery. Hopefully six hours later, they're up sitting in a chair and eating some food and walking around. And, and then we try to get everybody out the next day by noon. What's unique about Providence? You know, I think a lot of the success comes from doing a, a lot of volume and, you know, the, the program, combined program is the busiest in Orange County. Different docs that, that do this, we've all, we all work together. We have one surgical team, you know, so it's the same surgeons. I think the, the experience is what, what leads to our good outcomes. In TAVR, we're a three-star program, which is the top 7% of all programs nationally. So we were given that designation based on our good outcomes.